So one thing we did invest in, and this is like a tip that I would give to any entrepreneur, especially if you have multiple things going on, get an assistant. This is Jen Barna. I'm here again with Dr. Saira Ahmed. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. It's a pleasure to get to talk with you and delve in a little bit deeper on one of the many topics that I would love to talk with you about. There's certainly a long list here. I'm especially curious about your real estate business. So Dr. Ahmed is an internist and sleep medicine specialist. She practices full-time in utilization review and also helps run a busy sleep medicine practice. Is that right? Yes. And in addition to that, has a number of businesses with her husband. They run a real estate business. They run a school for teaching phlebotomy skills. They also run a clothing store that sells scrubs. That's an online, is that online only? Yes, it's only online e-commerce. Great. And also run a nonprofit for Muslims in their community and also to educate their community about Islam. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of these things are going on. And I'm curious, have you ever read the book, The 4-Hour Work Week? <laughs> yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. Does any one of these various businesses fit into that category? I don't think so. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. That seems to be a myth, but I think I'm going to ask everyone that as I go, because I'm still looking for that one. So tell me about how you got into the real estate niche and about your experiences, you know, pros and cons. Yeah, sure. So I kind of already knew about real estate because my parents own real estate, they own rentals. And so just seeing my parents, so just to give you some background, my father passed away around five years ago. But before that, 10 years ago, he was actually diagnosed with head and neck cancer and he had to retire immediately. And my mom was a beautician who used to work in a beauty salon and she had to quit her job to take care of my dad. So they found themselves without jobs, you know, kind of instantly when all this kind of went down. And I think the only thing that kind of saved them was their real estate, you know, and that was a real life example that I saw in my life. You know, they were able to do what they needed to do and live and not have to worry financially because of the real estate they owned and their rental income. And even till this day, my mom is retired and her house is paid off, her car is paid off and she has a nice little retired life and she's got a real estate income coming in and she's not usually worried about, you know, things financially. So seeing that uh, in my life with my parents, you know, probably around five years ago, my husband and I started thinking about retirement and just thinking about, you know, what's our long-term play here? You know, what are we doing long-term? What do we want in the years to come? And just thinking about those things and talking things out. And knowing that, you know, we're probably going to want to live in another country one day, or we might live here and somewhere else. We love to travel. So what is something that we can do that is going to allow us to have that lifestyle that we want, but at the same time, be able to pay our bills and, you know, remain financially sound. And just with my experience with my parents, I was like, it's got to be real estate. That's the only thing I could think of um, what, what I've seen. So my husband had no experience in it. His family has never done real estate or anything. So this probably came from me. So we basically just started small. You know, at the time we lived in a townhouse, I said, well, the first thing is let's pay this townhouse off and let's rent it out. Let's buy a house, you know, and let's rent it out. So that was the first thing we did. And then once we got into our house, we started to look for deals. I just did it on my own, honestly, you know, going through Zillow, going through auction.com, finding auctions in my town, you know, just locally. Anything that was being on foreclosure, um, just evaluating the deals myself and discussing it with him. And that's basically how we got started. So we're just one after the other. Now, so when you choose a property, are you doing single family, multifamily, apartment yeah. buildings? I started with single family and townhouses because that's where I felt comfortable uh, in the beginning. I, I didn't have experience with anything else. But I think now we've done multiple of those and we just bought our first a multi-unit, a seven-unit building actually last month. So this is our first uh, time we're diving into a multi-unit thing. So yeah, we're just kind of growing with that. Great. Good for you. And how is the multi-unit comparing to the single family? At least I know it's way early if you just bought it last month, but... Yeah. In terms of um, your projections, I'm curious. I think projection wise, it's going to be much bigger financially wise and the residual income we'll get every month. But the building we bought uh, has been shut down for two years. It was owned by a bank and is it's in pretty bad shape right now. 
So the first thing is we just did the demo. We just finished demoing out everything. And now we're hiring a contractor to go ahead and start renovating it. So once it's done, and our plan is basically to start renting out apartments as they're ready. So we're starting with the apartments that we think need the least work. So as soon as it's ready, we have our real estate agent already ready to go. He's ready to start renting them out. So we'll just start doing one by one. And I think once they're all seven of them are up and running, it should be a good thing. And in this case, will you have a property manager who lives in one of the apartments or how do you plan to handle that part? Yeah. So, so far up until this year, we've been managing our properties ourselves. So one thing we did invest in, and this is like a tip that I would give to any entrepreneur, especially if you have multiple things going on, get an assistant, you know? So this year we actually hired a personal assistant that me and my husband share full time. And so now he's also my property manager too. So I can take care of all the bills and all the things that need to be done, like paperwork wise, but the running around part, I make him do it now. So if someone needs to go on the job site, you know, he'll go take videos, pictures, things like that and send it back to me. That's brilliant. Are you using any virtual assistants as well? No. So I thought about that. I know a lot of people suggest that. I just figured if I'm going to get an assistant, I want someone that can run around town too. So I said, you know what? I definitely need an assistant, but I want someone who I can physically see who I can send around town, you know, and that way I'm using him for all array of things. You know, I use them for my mom. I use them for my car. I'm like, take care of my car, get the oil, let you do whatever needs to be done with my car. I don't want to know, just do it. And he takes care of everything. That's fabulous. Anything you can get off of your plate like that really has exactly. got to be critical to you so that you can use your time in mm-hmm. the best possible way. Yeah. So has owning real estate gone as planned every property that you've acquired? Yeah, I think some properties require more work than we initially thought, but at the end of the day, it does pay off. I think real estate is the one investment that is solid, honestly, and it's a long-term thing, you know? And in a way, all these other businesses that we started were kind of started to help support our real estate, you know, so that we could invest more eventually. And I think that is the goal is to continue building the portfolio. I mean, I think no projects are perfect. Sometimes, you know, we bought a project and there was something wrong that we didn't realize was wrong before we bought it. And it turns out our budget needed to be bigger to Mm -hmm. fix that issue. But I think so far, every project, though, has paid us back. And so do you have a specific formula that you use when you're looking at a property to determine whether it will cash flow? Yeah. So basically you have to look at what is going to be the rental income. What is the income that you're projecting that you're going to get every month? Obviously you want to make sure you can cover the property taxes. You want to make sure you can cover the insurance and any holding fees you might have if you're going to be providing utilities. So whatever your overheads are going to be, and then you just calculate it out to see what your cash flow will be monthly. And for me, I have a certain amount that I feel like will invest. You know, if it's going to cash flow like $500 a month, to me, it's not worth it. I just feel like we're doing so much work. I don't want to do it for that. So I think it should be more, you know, 1000 to 1500 a month. And that's where I feel like, okay, this is worth it. And so that's what you're looking for for a single family? Yeah. Okay. And so that would be accounting for everything that you've invested in the property Do you typically take out a mortgage on the property or do you typically pay cash for properties? Just curious what your advice there is. So once we really started getting into real estate, I started listening to the Bigger Pockets podcast. Uh, Love that podcast. Yeah, yeah. that's a great podcast. Yeah. So I learned a lot from that. Uh And that's where I learned the whole BBB strategy. So basically what it is, the first property we bought outright cash, but then you refinance it out after you complete the project, after the renovations are done, then you refinance it out and use that money to buy your next property. And that's basically what we've been doing. Okay. So that's brilliant. So you basically saved enough to purchase your first property with cash. Mm -hmm. And so then you had that investment that you could then turn over repeatedly. The next one. Yep. And that's what we've done with every property. So every project We've done after we complete the project, because obviously the value goes higher once you've completed it, Mm -hmm. then we work with the bank and we refinance it out. And then we take that cash we get and we buy another property on cash. That makes great sense. So, and that's worked well, it sounds like. 
yes. for you. Do you have mm-hmm. a certain number of properties that you're aiming for ultimately, or are you just kind of going indefinitely? I don't know. I think we're not sure. We don't have a certain number. I think we have a certain idea of how much we would like to have, you know, in our pockets every month. You know, we've had that discussion where this is how much we need to, let's say if we wanted to retire and shut things down, how much would we need every month to survive? So we have that kind of figure in our mind. I guess when we get to that point, maybe, I don't know. Right, right. And do you have advice for someone who might be interested as a physician specifically who might be interested in getting started in real estate? Yeah, I think like there's a lot of resources out there now. There's a lot of physicians doing real estate now. So I would definitely hook up, you know, there's a bunch of masterminds, there's a bunch of Facebook groups, the bigger pocket podcast has been so awesome. I've learned a lot of tips from just listening to that. So yeah, I would just get started with surrounding yourself with that type of stuff and those kind of people to know what to do. And I believe there's classes and courses out there too. I haven't done any of those, but it's an option as well. You were a kid. Did your parents actually sit down with you and show you the books so that you really understood the workings or did you just observe as you were in and out of the house? No, I didn't. They didn't show me anything. But now that my mom is retired, I manage all her properties. So we actually helped my mother-in-law buy a property that I manage now because she saw what we were doing. My mother-in-law saw what we were doing and she was like, well, I've got money in the bank. Why don't you buy me something? So I helped her buy something. So I think once it came down to me, my mom kind of threw everything on me when she moved down here. And she said, now, you know, she's like, you're going to inherit all this. So you might as well start working for it. (laughs) And So so I manage it for her now and my mother-in-law. So I I just kind of learned as I went along. What was the hardest thing to learn as you, we like to say, you know, flying the plane as you're building it. (laughs) Yeah. I think the hardest thing to learn was dealing with tenants. I didn't know how to deal with tenants in the beginning, you know, because you don't know if you're supposed to be nice or you're supposed to be strict. I mean, they're not your employees or they don't work for you. And what kind of relationship are you supposed to have with them? You know, are you supposed to be really friendly with them or not really friendly with them? And I think in the beginning, I wasn't sure of how to navigate that whole relationship. And I mean, now it's okay. I think depending on the property, everybody's different. Sometimes I have my my assistant deal with them. Sometimes I deal with them. And now it's just a normal thing. Do you have specific guidelines that you're using to choose your tenants or for your applications? No, I think one big mistake I made in the beginning was I thought I could find the tenants myself and I can bypass the whole real estate agent part. And that's a big mistake. I definitely would invest in an agent, you know, giving them that one month commission is totally worth it. You know, if it's going to ensure having a good quality tenant, I've been there, done that, but I've had to evict somebody. I've been through the whole eviction thing already and it's not a fun thing. So I definitely would recommend having an agent to work with. That's brilliant advice. Definitely pays for itself right away. Absolutely. Yes. Do you have a favorite real estate book? I don't. I've read a few of different books. I actually don't have a favorite one. I, I think the favorite book I probably it's like the all famous, you know, the was that rich dad, poor dad, you know, everybody talks about that sure. book. But yeah, I don't have a favorite now. Yeah. It sounds like you've taken that advice to heart for yes. sure. Mm-hmm. Terrific. So Syra, can you please tell us how people can find you? Yeah, people sure. Want to reach I, out. Yeah, sure. I think the best way to get me is probably through Facebook. I check Facebook a lot and through Messenger. So just go ahead and send me a friend request from Syra Ahmed, S-A-I-R-A-A-H-M-E-D. And that would be the best way. Our website for our e-commerce store is www.aplusmedicalscrubs.com. So you can definitely send me a message through there too. I do get those emails. And I think that would be the best way to get me. Well, thank you again so much for coming on the podcast. And I definitely look forward to talking with you again. Absolutely. Anytime. Hello, and thank you for listening. This is Amanda Taran. I'm the producer of the Doc Working Podcast. If you enjoyed our podcast, please like and subscribe. We would also love it if you checked out our website, which is docworking.com. And you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. On Instagram, we are docworking1, and that is with the number 1. 
When you check us out on social, please let us know what you would like to hear on the podcast. Your feedback really means a lot to us. And if you're a physician with a story you'd like to tell, please reach out to me at amanda at docworking.com to apply to be on the podcast. Thank you again, and we look forward to talking with you on the next episode of Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast.